Introduction to the concept. Let's talk about LCOE. In power generation systems. LCOE stands for Levelized Cost of Energy. But how exactly is the LCOE defined? In essence, the concept is very simple since it represents the average cost of the energy produced throughout the life of the installation. For this we will have to divide all the costs associated with the generation plant by the energy that has been produced. Simple, isn't it? The concept is clear, but how is the LCOE calculated? The mathematical definition is a bit more complex and needs to take into account various factors, initial investment, replacement investments, cost of operation and maintenance, fuel, cost of capital, bank interest, taxes, years of operational life of the installation, installation degradation and loss of efficiency, etc. Most of these concepts have to be estimated, both in their present value and in their future evolution, which makes their calculation very difficult in practice. Is the effort worth it? The answer to the previous question will depend on the stakeholder. We basically have a first group of agents whose objective is the development of a generation plant, a second group that has to do with the development of technologies and a third more focused on research and policy development. For the interest group whose objective is the development of a power generation plant, calculating the LCOE is relatively easy since they have all the project-specific data. But in reality they do not calculate it since it is information that is embedded in the business plan for the entire useful life of the installation. This business plan is very precise since it needs to answer the fundamental question, is the cost of generation going to be below the sale price of energy? It is also true that although they do not need to calculate it, they do need to evaluate it to make decisions regarding the selection of technology before committing the investment. The second interest group would like to be able to calculate the LCOE in order to be able to carry out a competitiveness analysis against other technologies on the one hand, and on the other to be able to promote improvements that will positively affect its expected LCOE in the future. Unfortunately, they do not have all the data, related to the location that may affect the resource, the customer that may affect the price of money or other technological elements that will accompany their solution within the power generation plant and therefore the CAPEX and OPEX global. The last group of interest is the one with the least data available, and in most cases those available are not very precise, and therefore the one that has the most difficulty in evaluating the LCOE. However, they are very interested because this value and its projections will allow them to focus research, carry out evaluations, offer consulting services and implement policies. However, a simplified version of the LCOE can provide valuable information. We are going to rule out the various costs of capital as a variable. The cost of capital is related to the bankability of the promoter company and that of the technology itself. We are also going to consider that the maintenance costs are going to remain constant throughout the life of the asset and that all the costs associated with the investment are executed at the beginning. If you are an investor in companies that develop solutions for the energy sector, whether they are startups or well-established companies, the reduced version of the LCOE can provide a lot of information that will help you in your investment decision. In essence, we will be able to analyze current competitiveness, what future competitiveness may be and where the company should invest resources to achieve that goal. If the company's plans help to positively assess those impacts then we have a solid foundation to support the investment decision. Obviously it is not the only factor to consider but at least it is an important one that we will have resolved. We will see with a series of examples how this analysis can help in investment decisions within this sector. A first analysis of LCOE would have to take into account the comparison between the different technologies, both in the present and in their future evolution. Therefore, the focus will not be on a specific company but on what should be the technologies in which the companies in which we will potentially invest should be positioned. In this type of analysis we will not focus so much on the current situation as on future expectations. If the LCOE reduction projections are based only on the volume of production and on analogies with the evolution of other technologies in the past, we should doubt them. In a second phase, we should study the LCOE for different companies within the technology we have selected. 
Here it will be important to understand if the solutions they have developed allow them to be an outlier, and to what extent there are entry barriers that protect them. If the potential for energy cost reduction is only based on the increase in production volumes, we will find ourselves facing a weak case where the possible entry of competitors with a better balance sheet will be a threat. Finally, and assuming that the previous analyses have been positive, it will be necessary to understand if the company's roadmap, and therefore where they are going to apply the resources they request from investors, is focused on reinforcing competitive advantages. Or to improve possible weaknesses. The energy sector is under continuous pressure to reduce the cost of energy and if the company is not focused on maintaining that pulse it will be better not to invest in it. In order to correctly evaluate these aspects, it will be necessary to be able to discuss this philosophy with the managers of the company and understand their motivations and ideas. If we are already investors, or belong to a relevant interest group, the simplified LCOE calculation tool provides us with a quick analysis of the possible efforts to be made by the company. Let's imagine that the board and management team of the company need to make a decision about several possible courses of action to improve the company. Since the resources, means, people, and financing, are limited, it is necessary to define which improvement projects need to be tackled and which ones should wait. A correct decision will increase the value of the company, while an incorrect one can seriously damage it or even lead to its disappearance. An example may better illustrate the potential of the LCOE as a tool for making development decisions within a company. Let's imagine the following scenario. The company has a budget that it can use to improve the following aspects of the product. 1. Increase in energy production efficiency by 10%. 2. Reduction of investment costs for your customers by 10%. 3. Reduction of maintenance costs for your customers by 10%. 4. Reduced system degradation by 10%. Or. 5. Increase in useful life by 10%. The technology offered to the market by this company represents 50% of the investment necessary to undertake the generation plant and also of the operation and maintenance costs. Let us also imagine that currently, the useful life of the installation is 20 years, the capex similar to opex throughout the entire life of the plant and the deterioration of efficiency is 1%. In this case, if the company decided to invest its resources in improving efficiency, its value proposition for customers would be more attractive and consequently the value of the company would be susceptible to improvement. On the contrary, if you had decided to invest your resources in reducing degradation throughout life, your competitive situation would not improve or could even worsen depending on what your competitors offered to the market. Therefore, the tool that provides the LCOE analysis is very powerful but it is not necessary to focus on the precision of the number but on the comparative value that it provides. We hope it has been useful to you.